one of the fascinating things which was discovered in the last century about our universe is that our universe seems to be expanding in other words all objects in the universe over large scales seem to be moving away from each other and an aspect of our universe which is fairly recently discovered is about the nature of what is known as the cosmic microwave background radiation so in my talk i will briefly be covering the aspects of the physics of expanding universe with a special emphasis on the nature of cosmic microwave background radiation there are three very interesting aspects about our universe the first is that we see structures over different scales we have planets stars nebulae star clusters and on much larger sizes we have galaxies clusters of galaxies super clusters of galaxies and larger uh, objects there is a certain difference in the physics of the formation of these two classes of objects in the process of formation of planets stars and these objects not only gravity but also other phenomena and physical processes like fluid dynamics plasma processes etc have played an important role however objects which are of the galaxies of uh, which are of the sizes of galaxies or larger the physics of their formation mainly has been dominated by gravity with other forces playing a relatively minor role the next important aspect is about the nature of universe over much larger scales than this it is seen that the universe over very large scales is actually homogeneous so before i proceed let me tell you a few things about distances one of the standard distance units which is used in astronomy and cosmology is that of parsec what is a parsec we have the earth and the sun if we move to a distance such that from there we see the angle subtended by the radius of the earth's orbit around the sun as one second of an arc then we call this distance from the sun as one parsec it turns out that one parsec is approximately 3 light years one light year being the distance traveled by light in one year now if we take a million parsecs and then 100 million parsecs we see that the universe is homogeneous over those scales let me quantify a bit more what i mean by this suppose i look at a large well maintained lawn we say it is well maintained when roughly speaking the greenery is uniform throughout the lawn however if i ask a grasshopper whether the lawn is well maintained the grasshopper is going to laugh at me it will say that the lawn is not at all well maintained why is the, this difference of perception that is because when a grasshopper looks at the lawn it sees the lawn over sizes of say 1 inch square it will find a blade of grass in one place and an empty patch in some 1 inch square space next to it whereas when we look at the lawn we roughly speaking divide the lawn in our mind into say squares of 1 meter size average the greenery in each of these squares and compare this average greenery from one square to another and this average greenery when you go from one square to another is approximately the same so i can say that the lawn is uniformly green over scales of say 1 meter similarly if i divide the universe into cubes 
of linear size of 100 megaparsecs and average the density of matter in the universe or in these cubes and compare the average density from one cube to another, it turns out that this average density remains the same from one cube to another. It is this what we mean by saying that the universe is homogeneous over 100 megaparsec sizes. Now the third interesting aspect about our universe is that we seem to be immersed in a radiation box. In other words, there is radiation which seem to be coming from all directions in the sky and this is called the cosmic micro background radiation. This was first detected by Penzias and Wilson, which was more of a chance discovery, but it opened the door for the study of the early phase of our universe. So, before I proceed further, let me give you a simple calculation about, uh, to get the equations of the expanding universe. Now, in order to study the universe, the rigorous way to do it is through Einstein's general theory of relativity. However, we are not interested in learning about the general theory of relativity in this talk. We are just interested in using the results of this theory in the context of cosmology. So, I will give you a simple minded which is not rigorously correct, but nevertheless gives the same equations which the more rigorous Einstein's theory gives. So, let us look at this calculation. And I will call this a Newtonian derivation. I called it a pseudo derivation because as I said, it is not rigorously correct. Suppose I have a uniform distribution of matter and I consider two points and draw a sphere of radius r, r being the distance between the two points. I take one of the points to be a test particle p. Now, at any instant, suppose this particle is moving away from this particle, the velocity with which it will be moving will be dr by dt. So, the kinetic energy per unit mass of this particle relative to the particle which has been assumed to be in the center of this sphere is half dr by dt whole square. Further, we know that if we have a spherically symmetric object, then at any point inside the spherically symmetric object, the contribution to gravity comes only from the sphere which is within the radius of the sphere. So, now here what we do is we calculate the potential energy of this particle per unit mass with respect to the sphere and that will come out to be g rho. Uh, okay, you can cut this. I think you can stop till the previous one because